goes by the name of Atlas the Bookkeeper. How you feeling, my friend? Okay, so now let's get to the meat of the podcast, what everyone's been waiting for. What's the big news that I have to share with all of you? Okay, well, <clears throat> here's the deal. As you know, a little over a week and a half ago, I appeared on the Kino Casino show. It went really well. Everyone loved the appearance. The Kino Casino viewers have started to come over and watch my content and engage with it and support it. And I'm very grateful for that because as I said in a highlighted clip here a day or two ago, you guys and your attention and your, your positivity, you are helping this channel in ways you just don't fathom. For 10 years, I haven't had that level of positivity towards me. Instead, it's been all negative. And because of that, this channel has suffered. Even though the content on it, people say is good, no one really cares or watches it. Everyone just makes fun of me. All right. The newfound positivity, people coming and leaving positive comments on the videos, liking the videos, new uh, people coming to watch the streams. The channel is up on views. The channel is up on engagement. The channel is up on support. The channel is up on everything. And we're not even doing anything particularly too interesting right now. That will change this week as we're about to talk about. Um, I am grateful for all of this, okay? Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, after appearing on the Kino Casino show a week and a half ago, Last weekend, we did our co-op react to the Review Tech USA documentary by June the King. That also went over really, really well. Everyone seems to have loved it. People have reacted to our reactions and love our reactions. So they're like, more. We want more. We want you and Kino Casino to do more together because you really have chemistry. Okay? Now, as I told you guys, I don't want to go crazy. I don't want half of my work now to be with Kino Casino and then it becomes not special anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like the reason why something like this is a big deal is because this is the kind of stuff I don't usually do. And the fact that I went outside of my comfort zone and I gave it a shot and it worked and then it worked again, it makes it more interesting as opposed to like some people are like, be the third chair on Kino Casino. And I'm like, as much as I actually think it probably would work, like I probably could do that. Um, number one, they're not asking for a third chair. That's not the whole idea here. That's number one. Number two, I wouldn't want to do it. I want to do my own content. I want to do my own style of stuff. It's cool to every once in a while be a special guest, but I don't want <clears throat> to become a part of their mainstream content. Do you understand? So, all that being said, people are like, what's next? And I've been telling you guys, I'm working with Kino Casino. We're talking about stuff behind the scenes. So I have an update on that. But it's an update like you'd never expect. All right, seriously, you'd never expect this update. I didn't expect this update. My mind is blown. So prepare your butts. Tighten your belts. Sit down in a chair and buckle up. You, if you're not in a chair that has a buckle, like a seatbelt, go to your car right now, sit in it, and buckle yourself in. Because if you don't, when I tell you this story, you're going to jump out of your pants, and you're going to be running down the streets completely naked from the waist down. And that's not a good look. You'll probably go to jail. Okay? So, I was talking with the Kino Casino guys. And their idea is they want to do game, a gameplay co-op. I mean, that would be very different from what we've already done, correct? We already had a, a show appearance, a co-op commentary, React. So they want to do gameplay. And so we started talking about it. Initially, the idea was fighting games. And I'm like, I'll be honest with you guys. I think the fighting game thing wouldn't even work for longer than 10 minutes. Because it doesn't matter what game we play. If we play Tekken, if we play Street Fighter, I'm honestly going to beat you guys up. It's not going to be funny for more than like a, a little quick joke. But it's going to be like destruction, destruction, destruction. Who cares about that? You want to do something that's maybe more fun, cooperative. You know what I'm saying? So this could be more interesting. So they were thinking about it. And they got back to me a few days ago. And they said, well, what about a co-op playthrough of that, that new game? It's only been out for like a month or two. Chained together. And I looked into it. And it's a silly game. It's on PC, by the way. So I, we could do it on PC. And it's online co-op where I guess four people play. And they're all you're all hooked together by a chain. And it's like platforming, survival. It's definitely one of these memer games where it's like a bunch of content creators who play it together and get each other killed and yell at each other and laugh. You know what I mean? It's silly fun. It's not anything super serious or anything, but it seems like something that could actually, like, work. All right? So, they suggested this to me. And I said, I'm not against that. You know, I don't know anything about it. But and I, we even talked about it. I said, how would we do it? And they were like, well, we could all stream our own perspectives. Like, you could stream on your own channel, as we do it live. So your fans and viewers can tune in there. We'll have our perspective on our channel. We may have people jumping back and forth to see the different perspectives from each person who's playing, right? 
And I thought, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Because that way, it's not like if I appear on their show, you know they're going to benefit. You know, they're going to get some contributions and stuff. If they appear on my channel, well, then I'm going to benefit, right? But if we do our own thing, but we're still doing work together, we all benefit, right? Like we all get something out of it. And I was like, this sounds fun and fair and something interesting that I haven't done. I mean, was the last time I did a co-op? Seriously, can you even remember the last time I did a co-op? So, sounds like an interesting idea, right? So, they said they had a bunch of ideas for people who we could do this co-op with. Uh, one is Mudahar. I guess he goes by Some Ordinary Gamers on the internet. He's a very popular YouTuber. Um, he also said Josh Moon. is. I think Josh Moon is the owner of Kiwi Farms. Now, I have no idea how that would work. All right, I'm being honest here. The owner of Kiwi Farms, the website that has been responsible for some of the most heinous things being posted about myself, my family members, my business. There's been full doxes. There's been all this shit going on. Okay? And I'm just like, you know what I mean? Like, I know I understand what they're what they're going for here. All right. They want to do something that's so outside the box that no one would expect it, and you know it would never have happened if all this other stuff hadn't been happening, correct? So we went back and forth a little bit. And so, you know, in regards to, to Mudahar, and that's how you pronounce his name, correct? Is it Mudahar? Because I want to make sure I'm saying his name right. Um, so essentially, I said to them, okay, like here's the thing about Mudahar. I'm not against doing a co-op gameplay with him, but that would, that would be confusing as hell to me, okay? Because Mudahar, from my, from my understanding, and allow me to explain, from my understanding in the past, Mudahar has been absolutely nothing but nasty about me. He said, oh, I, think, I hate this guy. I hate the way that he asks his viewers for contributions. And I, I stand, I'm completely against it. And I really hate his guts because of this, right? Like, I've heard him say stuff like that, where other people have said, that's the kind of things he says about me in his content, correct? And it was only a year ago. All right, I come off the side scrollers interview, which went incredibly poorly. We all know that, right? And Mudahar apparently offered me five thousand dollars, okay, for an interview. Why did he offer me five thousand dollars? Because I guess Review Tech wanted to offer me like two thousand dollars for an interview because he wanted to interview me after side scrollers. Like everyone wanted to talk to me after the side scrollers interview, right? Because they just wanted to cause further harm and damage. They wanted to cause talk about more drama and all this bullshit. Okay? So, Mudahar had posted up, oh, you know, $5,000 for Phil to do an interview. And at the time, he basically DM'd me on Twitter about this. I keep telling you Twitter, I know it's X. Who gives a shit, right? So, he DMs me on, on, on X. And we have a little back and forth. Essentially, what he says is, I want to have a direct interview with you. I'll pay you $5,000, right? You know, it'll be a fair interview, but there's going to be, you know, harsh questions and stuff like that. And I, I basically went back to him and I said, listen, I just did a seven. Well, I was seven. It was like five. I just did a five-hour interview with side scrollers. And although people don't like the interview, I guess, my answers aren't going to change about any of the shit that they tried to ask, the intrusive stuff about my life or my business or my finances. The answers are going to be the same. So, if that's all you're interested in, all right, then I'm not interested. I said, however, if you want to do an interview, and by the way, I'm not going to accept any money from you for this interview. I'll do it for free. I think I even said if he wants to donate the money to charity, he could do that. I can't remember how I phrased I think I might have even said that. Like, if you want to pay someone, go donate the 5K to charity. Don't give it to me. I don't deserve to be paid for an interview. That's ridiculous. Okay? I said, but I'll do it for free. However, I just don't want to do an interview with you that's all about drama. There's no point. I have nothing new to say about all the drama shit. I, I've said my piece on it, okay? But if you have anything you want to talk about, like topics about gaming, about YouTube, about things that I can add insight into, because I've been in, in the game for 16 years, and I'm a lifelong gamer, then I'm all game, all right? So that's how I left it, and literally, he just didn't respond, okay? He didn't respond at all. So I'm thinking the guy has ghosted me, and basically, all he cared about then, okay, <clears throat> basically, this is a situation where, how can I put it? Um, I basically just felt like all he cared about was drama, right? 
And if he's ghosting me, that confirms that, right? Okay, so now we're a year later. And I haven't spoken about Mudahar, haven't paid attention to him whatsoever at all, okay? And now these guys from Kino Casino seem to want to arrange this co-op gameplay with Mudahar. So I went back to him and I said, here's the weird thing. If, if he is okay with this, that's confusing to me. Because a year ago, it seemed like he hated my guts. The only thing he was interested in was talking to me about personal drama. And then he ghosted me for a year. Right. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to go DM Mudahar and see what's going on. It's weird that he would want to do a co-op gameplay with me. Um, because I guess along the lines there, you know, Kino Casino guys did talk to Mudahar and he said, yeah, I would do it. So that's what I mean. Like I went back and I said, that doesn't make sense. Why would he want to do this with me? Because it doesn't make sense at all. It's very confusing. Right. So I said, I'll DM Mudahar again and I'll find out what's really going on. Let me have a conversation with him. So I went to DM him. And it says, you can't DM this guy anymore. I was like, he blocked me? Holy shit. So not only did he ghost me for a year, he apparently blocked me at some point too, so I couldn't even like follow up with the conversation. So I went back to Kino Casino and told them that. And they're like, oh, well, we didn't know any of this personal drama was going on. All right. You know, we'll, we'll have to take a look at it and figure it out or whatever. All right. So then I was talking to these, to these guys again last night. <clears throat> um about what we want to do and basically after discussing it back and forth i was like i still want to do something with you guys you know this week so we were talking about dates and stuff that i could do it and i was giving them uh you know dates on when to do things and finally after this the discussion of dates and everything i said let me let me take another look and i went i don't know what spurned it but i went over and guess what? And this is, this is guys, where I have to completely 100% admit fault, and I have to publicly apologize. I've already personally apologized, but I want to publicly apologize for something. I had blocked Mudahar on Twitter. He didn't block me. I had blocked him. And I don't even remember doing it. Like, I 100% don't remember doing it at all. Okay? It was on me. I did it. I'm the moron. So, this whole year... I've been saying, oh, he ghosted me. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he actually would have, like, followed up and contacted me again. But I blocked him on Twitter, so he couldn't. So I'm the moron here. I'm the fucking jackass. But give me two fucking big donkey ears on my head. Hee-haw, hee-haw. I'm, I'm a, why would... It pisses me off, because now I feel so stupid. Because, you know, this might have been a situation that I've exacerbated. Saying things like, oh, he ghosted me for a year. He probably didn't. It's probably my fault. OK, so I want to for that, for saying that for a little literal year because I'm stupid. I want to apologize publicly to Mudahar. That's on me. I had I really don't remember blocking him on Twitter. It probably was either a fit of rage one day or who knows. Right. Like, I don't even know. But that's my fault. OK. So I unblocked him. And I sent him a DM. All right. And I just and this is, by the way, this is not private shit. This is like very basic cordial stuff. So I, I want to. Clear the air here. All right. So I sent him this DM. Okay. Hey, so I'd like to apologize. I know nothing about you, much like Me Medicare. And all I know is that you apparently really dislike me and have told your audience this over the years. PPP, which is what Ashton of the Kino Casino guys go by, told me that you're down for a co op of Chain Together. And I was like, why would he be down when he's ghosted me for a year after he offered me an interview? And now I just checked and I realized that I had blocked you some random night for some petty ass reason. And that's on me and I'm sorry. I honestly don't remember doing it. I'd be down to talk and maybe do a co-op if you are. I have no idea why you dislike me, but if I refuse to talk to people who've insulted me, I'd just be talking exclusively to my wall here, you know, and I laugh. Okay? <clears throat> so, that's what I sent him. He responded. All right? Here's, here's uh, Mudahar's response. And let me tell you something. This is mind-blowing. Okay? Absolutely, positively, 100% mind-blowing, this response. Are you ready for this? Because no, I never expected this response either. Okay? Fuck you, motherfucker, you piece of shit. No, that's not what he said. I'm kidding. I made that up. <laughs> he said the following. You ready? 
honestly, man, I don't have any dislike. I think a lot of, of this might have stemmed from your habit. Oh, no, from a habit of watching you on YouTube. And I see a lot of clips of you financially incentivizing your audience. Yeah, there's a ton of clips of that out there. It's a massive peeve of mine and something that I found to be, in my opinion, a bit manipulative. But honestly, you're not a bad guy. I really do think a lot of your detractors are insanely unhinged with how much digging that they do on you or actually going out of their way to dig into serious personal aspects of your life. If asking for donos is your worst crime, then I'm the one that has to apologize. I'm not done yet, but... What? What? Wait a minute. Stop the presses. Hold your horses. Everyone stop in your tracks. Someone who is a big content creator, someone who is well-respected, right? Someone who has an audience, who when he speaks, his audience listens, and therefore they act based on his opinions, right? And someone who basically has crapped on me all these years, supposedly for my grift, as they say, right? Has basically just said, that now I guess what it probably is, is he's seeing me. Oh, by the way, I didn't finish because this is why. You know, seeing me on Kino Casino, seeing my react to the, to the rich thing, knowing the Kino Casino guys, right? He's basically now saying, I apologize for, for my behavior if the worst thing you've ever done is kind of annoyingly asked your viewers for contributions. Holy shit. No, never in five zillion years would I have expected that. That is the biggest out of nowhere shocking thing to happen in a long time. Let's put it that way. No, I never, it's like people all of a sudden are treating me nicely, right? And I'm just like, what is going on? Again, I'm not used to this at all. I, this is shocking that I would be treated with respect. That people would actually look into the situation rather than just follow negative memes about me. And now that they see the truth of the situation, they're being nice. I, I don't get it. I, I, 10 years, guys. 10 years. that I've been basically conditioned to only expect the negative. And now that positive things are going on, right? I'm losing my own mind. It's, it's like, <laughs> what the fuck is happening? I'm lost. I just Okay, so let's continue because I want to finish this, okay? So continuing on, he says past 3 years, I don't know if you've seen my content. I haven't. I don't as you guys know, I don't follow any of these guys content. I just learned about Kino Casino recently. I gave him a shot. Obviously it worked out, right? And now I don't know anything about Mudahar, the kind of content he puts out. I don't follow him, okay? So listen to this. Past three years, I don't know if you've seen my content. I've done investigations on numerous influencer crypto scams. Uh, on Gerard, the completionist's charity fraud. And more recently, how Boogie completely lied about his cancer. There are some seriously terrible people on the platform. Seeing you on Casino has been very redeeming. I'd be down for some chain together or just having a chat or something even further down the road if you want. And, uh, and then he basically said, have a good night. And I said, wow, good night and thank you so much. So... What the hell is going on? <laughs> what is happening? Because again, this had this had to be had to be ironed out. I was not going to do co-op gameplay with him unless we had some kind of a conversation first. Because it made absolutely no sense to me that this is a guy who people have told me over the years doesn't like me, makes fun of me, rips me a new butthole when it's convenient for him for his content. So why would I do a co-op playthrough with this guy, right? Now, after him saying that, I feel like he's a complete 180. Like what is it is this really happening? Am I really is this isn't like like no one's kidnapping me and punking me, right? Like you know what I'm saying? Like this isn't like a VR alternate reality bullshit or alternate uh what do they call it? Altered reality AR this is not, like, this is real, correct? Like, everything here, I'm touching, it's tangible. I feel, hold on. Yeah, ow, that hurt. 
that hurt when I pinched myself. So I guess it's real, right? But I'm just like, what the hell? And here's the truth. I never had a beef with any of these people who have had a beef with me. Kino Casino was making fun of me, but I didn't know who they were. Mudahar slamming me, you know, insulting me. I don't know who he is. I don't really care, right? Like, these are people who only had issue with me. I never had issue with the world. The world just hated me. And now all of a sudden it's like things are, are like changing. And I don't really know how to handle it. <laughs> I don't. Because it's good, right? This is all good. This is like, I think what it is is people are, are actually seeing what's going on. The positivity. The, tur the turnaround. That they're, they're calling it a redemption arc. The thing is, I don't know if I consider it a redemption arc. Because what am I being redeemed of? I didn't do anything wrong. I was just sitting here in my space for a decade making content and they chose to make me the target of this kind of harassment. I'm not sure what exactly it was that I did that started this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like what was my egregious heinous action that started all of this that everyone hates me? I'm not sure. Cause here's the truth. I'm changed, right? <clears throat> it's just a weird flipping on its whole head kind of a deal. And I'm just, I can't believe it. All right. I just can't believe it. Is it right now? Nemesis T type says, what is this? Good karma is a decade of bad things happening to you. Does it line you up for good karma eventually? And again, I do feel like it's too good. You know me. We've already talked about this last week. I feel like it's too good to be true. I feel like it's, it's all fleeting. I feel like it's just going to flip on its head again. And everyone's going to hate me again. I just feel like it's coming. Right. But that's, that's partially because of me being beat up for so long and having these feelings in the back of my head that I'm not good enough and I don't deserve anything. It's part of depression. It's part of other things in my head and my, my emotions. You know what I mean? And, but maybe, it, maybe things are actually getting better because when he sent me this message last night, I was like, I seriously can't fucking believe I just got this. Like this is the complete and utter opposite of anything I would have actually expected to get from, from this guy. And I'm reading it. I'm like, this can't be true. This has to be like I'm dreaming right now, right? Like I'm in, I'm a fever dream. No, I woke up and I still have the message. <laughs> it's, it's still real, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, like, like. So here's the truth. I never had anything against Mudahar at all. If you, if you were to ask me about Josh Moon, yeah, I'm pissed that Josh Moon hosts a website. That has really fucked up stuff about me and my family and, and, and illegal actions on there. I, that's fucked up. Even you can argue he didn't put it up there. It's still up there. And it's his, it's his website. He's responsible for it. So, yeah, I understand legally he's in the clear. Morally, he's not. And so I do kind of have a problem with that. All right? Do I hate the guy? Do I hate his guts? Do I wish harm on him? No. But it does upset me that he has allowed that website to exist when he's seen the harm that it's caused over the years. Okay? With Mudahar, I don't think he's ever really done anything, you know, negative to me, right? I, so I don't really know why I'd be angry at him. Like, I think it was more on his end, him not liking me than anything else. I knew nothing about him. No, I don't know that he exposes these big scams and, and horrible things going on. I don't have any, any information about that. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Here's the deal. This week coming up, we're probably doing something together. I don't know if it's actually going to be this game chain together. I don't know if it's going to be an appearance on the Kino Casino show. I don't know what it's going to be. But likely coming in this next six days, one night, either like Tuesday or Wednesday night, probably around then, I'm going to be doing something with those guys again. If it's gameplay of this chain together, cool. I'm down for that. I mean, we just got to figure out the logistics. Like game, I could buy the game. Uh, and, and we can figure out, I guess, each other's Steam names and join that way and do co-op. But I don't know if the game has vo in-game voice chat. I already have a mic. Remember, I bought that mic for PlayStation 5? That works for PC. So I could use that mic to voice communicate through my gaming PC, whether it's we need to use Discord to voice communicate or we use the game. It's, I don't know if the game has its own thing or not. You know, I'm sure we could figure this out. Um, but yeah, like, why wouldn't I? Uh, why wouldn't I want to do stuff like that? Right, so I'm I'm curious how this would go, how well received this would be. What's funny is I'm 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 gonna be transparent here. Right now in chat, I got people saying Muda is a snake in the grass. Don't trust him. Look what he did to Boogie on Lolcow. Yeah, but I, okay, I get what you're saying. 
But look what he did to Boogie on Lao Kao Live. You mean Boogie who signed up for a disgusting, toxic show of self-degradation to make money? Which he shouldn't have been on there. He should have been smarter than that. I told him not to do it. He didn't listen. Right? Like, and I, if anything, I think, you know, M Muda hates Boogie because of things like faking cancer. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff that bothers him. What's up, Jade? Good morning. You know, so I don't know. Exactly. So you you never know, because I got people in chat who are saying negative things about Mudahar right now. And it's like, are these people well-intentioned or not? Or are these people who are trolls who are upset that someone else now, it seems to be okay with doing stuff with me, right? I don't know. I don't know, because I really don't know much about Muda. So I can't answer that. You know what I'm saying? I've literally not had a real conversation with him, just a few back and forth DMs and stuff. You know, I don't know anything about the guy. So. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know what we're doing this week. We have to talk about it and hash it out. But, you know, I'm open to doing something one of these nights, whether it be, you know, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Um. I'll let you guys know when we have more information. I'm sure they're, on their end, they'll talk about this as well. But I do want to sincerely say to Mudahar, thank you. That was incredibly gracious of you to say nice things like that out of the blue. It wasn't expected. And it's my fault. I'm the one who blocked him. Yet here I am talking shit for a year saying that he ghosted me. When very well, maybe that wasn't the case. Maybe he would have reached out to me at some point. But I blocked him, so he had no opportunity to do that. So he, his impression is, I just don't want to talk to him, right? And instead, I talk, I'm i talking shit for a year like a moron, and then I look, oh, you got to be kidding me. I'm the asshole here, not him, right? <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so let's see what happens, all right? So now here's the deal. Here's the schedule for the week. Let's go into this, this new segment, okay? So schedule for the week is as follows. Today, we're going to play System Shock Remake for a full gameplay session. I'm excited to get into the meat of it. We only played it for about an hour and a half, two hours earlier in the week because of, you know, other things I was doing, like the Wu Black with Wukong benchmark. Um, so I want to get more into it today. I hope you guys will stick around after this podcast ends for that. Tonight, it is Friday Night Fights, Street Fighter Six. I'll be playing with E Honda and trying to get him to master rank. We're close. We might very well do it tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to do more System Shock remake on the day stream. And tomorrow night is going to be Stardew Valley Chill. Sunday is my React day, so we're going to do my DSP versus the Internet clip show on DSP React. And then on the night stream, it's going to be more retro React streaming to my old runs of PS Home over on my DSP throwback channel. We're actually going to do the second one this time, which is 2009 run. Monday, we will have a daytime stream, and I'm uncertain what it will be because it could be more System Shock, or I could do a major stream of Street Fighter Six. I'm undecided on what I want to do on Monday. I'll think about it, but maybe you guys give me your feedback on that. All right, Monday night, there is no stream. Why? Because I have to film private patron videos for the month. It's I know we're halfway into the month and I'm doing it now. So I have to get it done. So Monday night, there is no stream whatsoever. I'll be doing private patron stuff. But just listen to this. On Tuesday, Tuesday, August 20th, could be one of the most momentous days I've ever streamed. The first stream will be the premiere of Black Myth Wukong. Brand new, hot game. Everyone wants to see it. Everyone wants to play it. I'll be playing it on my brand new gaming PC with super high settings. It's going to be amazing, correct? It's going to be absolutely crazy amazing. Then, potentially, that night, I may be streaming with the guys from Kino Casino and maybe Mudahar. I don't know. We, gotta, we have to figure out the, the, the details. But imagine if that's the day. The day is the premiere of a big, hot new game. First game ever that's a hot new game I'm playing on my PC. And then I'm doing, like, a special stream to do stuff with them on the late stream. I mean, <laughs> coming out of nowhere. Seriously, this is all coming out of nowhere, right? 